Okay guys, in this video I'm going to show you guys how to replace the driver side motor mount on a 2007 to 2013 GMC SUV or full size truck in the all wheel drive. It's a little bit different from the just uh, the two wheel drive version. There's a couple extra steps, so I'm going to walk you guys through that. I'm not going to do a whole lot of talk, I'm just going to give you the cut and dry and uh, we'll go from there, okay? Okay, we're on top of uh, the truck here. Um, staring down at the motor mount, I'm going to show you guys what you need to take apart from the top side of the truck. We're going to take loose the 15 millimeter bolts that hold the motor mount to the subframe of the truck. I've got the extension right here on the top one. You have another one right there. And then you have another one over here on this back side that you can't really see. They form like a little triangle. Go ahead and get those loose. Um, if you have a magnet, you can go ahead and pull those out. But uh, if not, just wait until you get down on the bottom side of the truck and you can reach your arm around and grab them. One more to go, and as you guys can tell, I these are stuck in there, so you're just gonna have to work with them. Um, I started the vehicle, got it warm again. I had to use uh, WD-40 and some PB Blast uh, to get some of the stuff loose. So um, yeah, so I got one more to go. I already got it broken loose. It had to be a combination of uh, extensions, a universal, and a 15 varying between the half inch and three quarter. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the last one out. I think I about got it. Uh, and then we can move on to the underside. Cool. All right. Last bolt's coming out now. So, should be moving underneath here just in a minute. All right, I got all three bolts out. Uh, real time, that took about 25 minutes to get all three of the top bolts out. So um, these were actually pretty rusted in there. So um, again, I had to soak them in PB Blast, let them set for a minute. Um, and again, the, the car was still warm, so it helped everything soak in. So now we're gonna go on the bottom side and I'll show you the four 15 millimeter bolts that you have to pull out down there. Okay, so on the all-wheel drive versions, you have these three top motor mount bolts. You do that just the same, okay? But since you have the front differential in the way, you cannot pull the motor mount out of the back. You have to go out of the front. So you then have to remove the steering shaft, okay? So how to do that, um, before you move that, I put a paint mark on it, you know, to line everything up. That way nothing gets messed up. You clock it correctly, but another step that you have to do to ensure that you do not damage the clock spring or anything like that is just take a simple bungee cord around there and around to the brake pedal so this doesn't easily move. For some reason, um, this column wouldn't lock into place, so go ahead and do that. Take your paint marker or whatever, mark the shaft, then you need to remove this bolt right here. And then down here on the other side of this elbow is an 11 millimeter that you have to remove and then pull the shaft up. And then this main shaft should come out like that. It might take a little bit of work and might take a little bit of WD-40, but you should get it out. Once I get it out, I'll be right back. Okay, again, this job, the book says, takes about anywhere between four and seven hours. I'm gonna basically give you an elapsed time of each step of how long it took me to get this off. So again, this sits in there, this attaches to the top side, comes down, attaches to the bottom side, 11 mil bolt right there. Now what you have to do is you have to get under the truck and tap it off of the shaft on the bottom and then let it drop and then wiggle it back off the shaft uh, near the header, okay? So that how, that's how I got it off. It took me about 25 minutes. It does take a little bit of tapping with a hammer, but after that, you're good to go. 
Okay, I just want to show you guys from the top view. That's where the bottom of the shaft connects to. That's what you have to tap it off of. Here's the um, top part with my white mark. Whenever we get done, we will line everything back up and run our bolts back through. But now, as you can tell in a previous step, I removed the three 15 millimeter bolts. One, two, three. Um, I actually did that first, but um, yeah, anyway, they're removed. So now what we need to do is we need to remove the engine cover, okay? Because we're gonna jack the motor up now. There's multiple ways you can do this, uh, but we need to get the left side of the motor up so I can get to the four bolts, the four 15 millimeter bolts that go directly to the side of the block. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna remove the cover and then we are going to jack up the motor and I'll show you how I have that done and how I've done it in the past and it works okay. And uh, we'll go from there, be right back. Okay, so you can tell I removed the cover. All it does is it just pops up off of these tabs right here. So it's, it takes two seconds to remove, okay? So let me go down here and show you how I jack up the vehicle, especially if you don't have a lift, which is no big deal, okay? So I've got my jack and all I did was remove the cross member that goes right here, okay? All it is is just four bolts, nothing crazy. Okay, and then take your piece of wood on the back side of the oil pan, and then you just jack up nice and slow. You're not gonna hurt anything. I've seen people actually jack it up by, if you have a lift, they actually jack it up by this corner of the catalytic converter on this side to get that left side up. We don't have to do that. Um, you can if you want, but all we did was just take a jack, a little piece of wood, on the back side of the oil pan after removing that cross member. That cross member only took about five minutes or less uh, to remove. So now we're gonna go back up to the top side. Ugh. Back up to the top side. And as you can tell, I'm up. So now there are inside of this heat shield right here on this side, there's 115, 115. Then we go down to the bottom on the bottom side and there's it's basically just a square pattern two on the top two on the bottom so uh i don't have anybody to hold the phone for me uh so i will show you whenever i get done okay okay guys i got the top bolts out but i want you to be aware of something when you're doing this the bolts on the very top here and there they actually angle kind of back up so when you're trying to locate that, make sure you get a good, um, a good angle on that. So they're angled kind of up towards the engine block. Um, so make sure like when you go to take those out, you don't, uh, or your socket's not on them awkward and you go to uh, twist them off, uh, that you don't round those bolts off. So um, it only took me about five minutes to get the tops out. Now we're gonna go down there and uh, we're gonna go right through here. I'm actually uh, small enough to where I've got the truck jacked up that I can just like peek through here and hit the bottom. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna, whenever I get back down there, I'll be back. Okay, so I'm kinda like wrenched myself up underneath the truck, but right there in the center of the screen, uh, you can see the bottom left bolt and on the other side of the mount is the bottom right bolt. We're gonna take those out as my fingers are shaking. Oh God. Okay guys. I got the mount out, um, so it actually bolts into the car like this. You got your three bolts, three bolts on top of the frame that I showed you. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, these four bolts right here go into the side of the motor. Now, when it's in the car like this, this lower, this lower one right here is a pain in the butt. So um, this is where you're gonna spend most of your time because if it's an all-wheel drive version, the transfer case will be in the way, okay? So be prepared. The two bottom bolts took me about a half an hour just to get those out, okay? Now, with the all-wheel drive models, you have this little pin on the back and depending on how high you're able to get the engine up will depend on how you kind of wiggle this out, okay? So the easiest way I found is if you get enough clearance Roll the engine mount backwards, slide it away and roll it backwards to get this pin out and then slide it forward up and out of the top. Okay, that's the easiest way I found to do it. And as you can tell, that's that clunking noise whenever, whenever you take off from a stop is this motor mount. So what we got to do is we got to get in here. These two, I don't know, there we go. Take these two nuts off, okay? Separate everything. We need to get our heat shield off. The heat shield goes on, then we put this plate 
on and we're ready to go, okay? So I'm gonna do that real quick, should take no more than five minutes, all right? Here we go. Okay, so I wanted to give you guys a quick look at this real quick. Um, see how it's actually split? I just All I did was just take off that plate and uh, the heat shield, but as you can tell, pretty beat up. Um, the only thing that's really holding it in is this pin across here, so um, it appears that this has been uh, bad for a while, but I've got everything apart for two seconds. Um, I'm gonna put everything back together and then we're gonna wiggle this thing back into place. Now this part's gonna actually be the pain in the butt as you line your bolts out, because I was literally on the car with my feet out uh, just trying to get that lower bolt. So um, it will be a pain in the butt, but what you guys have to understand is shops charge anywhere between, depending on what their hourly rate is, they charge anywhere between 600 and and $1,000 to do this. And this is something that you can do in an afternoon. So. Um, hopefully, I'm kind of guiding you guys through as fast as possible. Um, just give it about a half a day. If you're out, if you're working in a shop or your driveway or whatever you're doing, it takes about a half a day. I've been getting interrupted all day today, so um, I've got about a half a day in it. Um, but actual labor-wise, I've got less than less than two hours in it so far. So here we go. Okay, all back together. So just a quick heads up orientation if you get this if you get it apart and you totally do basically what I just did and it's like oh crap which way did it go the holes in the heat shield line up with the top and then the bottom ears on the bottom are open and clear all right so make sure you get that orientation right or you get it all the way in there and it's clocked wrong and you get a lot of frustration all right going back in guys all right guys I wanted to show you that uh, I had wiggled the mount back in um, I did all of the bolts that go to the block, the bottom right being the worst, so I started there. Um, and then, as you can tell, I've got the three bolts on top of the mount. Now, the trick to that is um, when you go to let the, the engine back down, don't run it or let it down all of the way because um, they, those holes are a bit of a pain in the butt to line up. So if you leave it up about a quarter of an inch, Typically, once you get that pin to set down in the frame, which it 99% of the time it self aligns. Now, don't hold me to that, but it self aligns fairly well. Leave it up, leave the engine up about a quarter of an inch, and those bolts will go right in. Now, as you can tell, I've got the steering shaft out of the way, so it was way easier to get those in uh, than it was taking them out because I had not taken the steering shaft out yet. So, um, Guys, we are just about wrapped up, so um, I'm going to let the engine down all the way, let it rest completely on the cradle. I'm going to stick the steering shaft back in, get the 11 mil and the 15 mil bolts put back in, and then we're pretty much wrapped up. Throw the engine cover on the top, and uh, away we go. And um, just want to let you know, guys, time-wise, from the last time I talked to you, we've got about another 45 minutes to an hour just getting everything lined up, taking my time. And uh, so hopefully, when we come back, it's all done. Okay, guys, so we're wrapped up. Um, I put the cross member down on the bottom. All I gotta do is just let everything down and uh, we're good to go. So let's recap. All I did was jack the vehicle up. We took the steering shaft out, the 15 mil, the 11 mil down at the bottom, got that out of the way. Took the three 15 mil bolts out of the frame, jacked the motor up until it would stop, before we did that, we took the engine cover off. We jacked it up until you got pressure. Just basic tools. We got under there with a uh, 15 mil um, random assortment of uh, extensions and a ratchet. And uh, we took the four bolts off the block, wiggled it out the front. Okay, you have to go out the front um, when it's the all-wheel drive. If it's just rear-wheel drive, you just drop it out of the back. No big deal. Um, and then, you know, we took and transferred over the heat shield and the, the motor plate, and then it was just reverse. So basically all you need is jack, jack stands, 15 mil short and deep well, and it's just an arrangement of um, 3 8 extensions, and that's pretty much it. So hopefully I got uh, just a quick overview of what we did, um, and if you guys liked it, please hit the subscribe button wherever it may be. Um, and, uh, you know, give us a like in the video. And if you guys have any other uh, tips and tricks, maybe to go a little bit faster. All in all, I was about three hours, 45 minutes in the total job start to finish. Um, it took me an afternoon because I kept getting interrupted. So, again, please subscribe. Hit the like button if you liked it. 
and uh, comment. Let's hear some comments. All right, talk to you later, guys. Thanks.